All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Section 3.2. Truth tables. When we get done with this section, hopefully we'll be able to construct truth tables uh, for negation, disjunction, and conjunction. Construct truth tables for conditional and biconditional statements. Construct these tables for compound statements and um, be introduced and be able to apply the hierarchy of logical connectives. Okay, Just like there's an order of operations surrounding a set of real numbers, there's also an order of operation uh, surrounding logics, logic. Okay, And we'll see that. A truth table, what is it? It's basically a table <clears throat> that is used to show when a compound statement is true or false. All right. Negation. According to our definition of a statement, a statement is either true or false. Okay, we've seen that last week. A simple statement is clearly either true or false. There's no in between. All right, consider the simple statement. Today is P is the simple statement defined to be today is Tuesday. Um, is this statement true today? Is this a true or false simple statement? It is, happens to be true. Today is Tuesday. What would be the negation of this simple statement? The negation is preceding the letter P, which is simple statement P, with a little tilde symbol. That means not P. That's how we negate the simple statement P. So not P would be saying that today is not Tuesday. All right. All right. So if today is Tuesday, which it happens, which it happens to, be, to be, simple statement, simple statement P P P is a true statement. The negation of simple statement P is a false statement. Okay. If it was not Tuesday, then the simple statement P would be a false statement, and the negation of simple statement P would be a true statement. It just depends. All right, this is what a truth table looks like for the negation. Um, we have a column for our simple statement P's truth values, which are either going to be true or false. And then we have a column for the negation of the simple statement P. So the negation of true is false. The negation of false is true. Does that make sense so far? All right. All right, now, most of our problems are going to involve two simple statements and forming compound statements from two statements. There will be a couple where we use three statements. But... When we build a truth table for two simple statements, P and Q, um, we always start the first column of our truth table with P, and then we have our second column, which is Q. All right, this will be the, um, the way we always fill out these first two columns of a truth table with two statements. P is always going to be true, true, false, false. Q is always going to be true, false, true, false. All right, now... By filling out column P and Q this way, you're going to get all of the possible combinations. Notice P can take on one of two states, true or false. Okay, Q can take on one of two states, true or false. So how many different combinations of truth values can you have from two statements P and Q? You can have two times two or two to the second power or four different combinations of truth values. Okay. In other words, P could be true and Q could be true, or P could be true and Q could be false, or P could be false and Q could be true, or both P and Q could be false. These are the four possible com truth uh, combinations of truth values uh, that two statements can have. Uh, any, any questions about that so far there? That truth table so far. So P column is always going to be true, true, false, false. Q column is always going to alternate. True, false, true, false. All right, now how about for a conjunction, which is basically the same as the word and. Um, and back in set theory, it's the intersection of two sets. Suppose a friend tells you I bought a new computer and a new iPad. This compound statement can be symbolically represented as P and Q, where P is a simple statement that 
um, I bought a new computer, and Q is the simple statement that I bought a new iPad. All right, this is a conjunction. Uh, we're going to try to investigate what the truth table looks like for a conjunction. Okay, when would this conjunctive statement be true? Does anybody want to weigh in? When would this statement be true? Well, the only time a conjunctive statement or and statement is going to be true is if both simple component statements are true. So if your friend actually uh, bought a new computer and your friend also purchased a new iPad, then we would say P and Q is true. Otherwise, it's false. Okay. On the other hand, suppose your friend bought only a new laptop or only a new iPad or maybe neither of these two devices. Then, ladies and gentlemen, we would say this conjunctive statement it would be false. So a conjunctive statement is only true when both component statements are true. Otherwise, it's always false. So knowing that, let's see if we can build a truth table for this conjunctive statement. Here we go. Uh, the P column is always true, true, false, false. Q column is true, false, true, false. And now P and Q column. Okay, true and true means the conjunctive statement is true. True and false means the conjunctive statement is false. False and true means the conjunctive statement is false. And false and false means the conjunctive statement is false. In other words, and is very, very restrictive and picky. And requires that both component statements be true for it to be true. If just one and or both component statements are false, then the whole conjunctive statement is false. Does that make sense? That's the way it's always going to be for a compound conjunctive statement. Those are the truth values for a, con for a conjunctive statement. Always going to be that. R. How about a disjunction, which is or, or the same thing as the union back in set theory. Suppose your friend from the previous example made the statement, hey, I bought a new laptop or a new iPad. How does or change from and? Okay. Is or more restrictive or less restrictive than and as far as it being true? Well, symbolically, it's represented as P with an upside down V, Q. That means P or Q in logic. P is a simple statement that I bought a new laptop. Q is a simple statement that I bought a new iPad. When would this disjunctive statement be true? I have a question for you. Is it necessary for both simple statements P and Q to be true for the conjunctive statement to be true like it was for an and? No. No, it is not. And required that both P and Q be true for the conjunctive statement to be true. But for the disjunctive statement P or Q to be true, ladies and gentlemen, it just suffices that at least one and or both of these component statements are true. If that's the case, the whole disjunctive statement is true. So when is a disjunctive statement false? Well, it would be false if my friend neither purchased a laptop computer or bought a, an iPad, then it would be false. So this would be the truth table for a disjunctive statement. Notice your P and Q columns are always the same as we've seen in previous slides. P is true, true, false, false. Q alternates, true, false, true, false. Now, true or true, is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. The only time a disjunctive statement is false is if both simple component statements, P and Q, are both false. Then the disjunctive statement is false. Otherwise, it's true. So do we see the difference between a disjunction and a conjunction? In fact, they appear to be kind of like the flip-flops of each other. Do you agree? In a way, well, somewhat, but you can see the difference. There is a huge difference between or and and. Any questions about or or and? Conjunction versus disjunction, the truth values. All right, how about a conditional statement, if then? A conditional statement, which is sometimes called an implication, consists of two simple statements using the connectives if then. So whenever you see the constructs, the words, if, then, you have a conditional statement. 
The statement immediately following the word if is called the antecedent of the conditional statement. The second statement, okay, following the word then is called the consequent. All right, here's an example. Suppose a simple statement P is defined to be that the Cubs win tomorrow. Suppose simple statement Q is that they make the playoffs. And ladies and gentlemen, P with this little arrow, one directional arrow, then Q is called the conditional. How would we read that, you know, conditional uh, or translate the symbols into a uh, word statement? Anybody want to try that? P arrow Q. How would we turn this into two words? If the Cubs win tomorrow, yeah. then they make the playoffs. Okay. I didn't catch the first word. Was the first word out of your mouth if? If. You yes. Are you are correct. Yeah. If the Cubs win tomorrow, then they make the playoffs. That's exactly how you read that conditional statement. Okay. So you got the if then construct in there. You must always have the words if and then if you ever see a simple statement in a one directional arrow, then another simple statement. Got to have it. All right. Now let's break down the truth values of a conditional statement. You have to look at different cases here to get a feel for this. Case one, suppose the Cubs win tomorrow, so P is true, and they make the playoffs, so therefore Q is true. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you think that the if-then should be true? Yes. Yeah, and it is. You're correct. So, if P is true and the simple statement Q is true, okay, then the conditional if P then Q is true. So again, if both simple statements are true, and if then uh, conditional statement is true. C case number two, the Cubs win tomorrow. They held up their end of the bargain, but somehow they got screwed out of the playoffs. Does that seem right? No. No, you're correct. So ladies and gentlemen, in a conditional statement, if P is true, the antecedent is true, and yet the consequence is false, all right, then the conditional is false all right and it should be because like i said just think of it this way i mean the cubs did their business you know they took care of their end of the deal they won the game well why don't they they should make the playoffs right but they got screwed out of the playoffs that's a farce that's why it's false think of it that way okay. case three the cubs lose tomorrow and still make the playoffs now if you're a cub fan or you're a cub player or a cub manager is that good or bad Yes, you lose the game tomorrow, but you still make the playoffs. Good or bad? It's good you make the playoffs, but it's bad you lose. <laughs> well, yeah, we we you know we won't, would want to had we would like to have won, but you know, hey, the silver lining of that loss is we still make the playoffs. So this is a true situation. So if P is false, and yet Q is true. Then the conditional statement, if P, then Q, is true, is true. All right. Now, this last one here, case four, is a little bit of a head scratcher. Uh, but um, let's just read it. It says, if the Cubs lose tomorrow, then they don't make the playoffs. So if both P and Q are false, Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, the additional statement, if P, then Q, is not false. It is true. It is true. Now, the only reasoning, the only uh, way I can reconcile this in my mind is this way. Well, the Cubs lost tomorrow. That means they probably won't have a chance in the playoffs anyways. So it's probably good that they stay home. And that's why it's true that this be the case that they did not win the game tomorrow therefore they should stay home that should be a true thing they should stay home they should not make the playoffs that's the only way i can reconcile that mind. okay all right so i have a question for you when is the only time that a conditional is true there's only one case what is it i'm sorry there's there's two cases there's three for the true, one for the false, right? There's three cases. I'm sorry. What? 
I'm sorry. What I meant to say is this. this is really are, question. Well, when is the only time a condition almost false? That's what I meant to say. Well, all of them are false. Oh, no. When P is false and Q is true. No, the only time is... I... Yeah, go ahead. When P is true and Q is false? That's correct. And you know, this is how I remember it, ladies and gentlemen. This is how I can remember. This is how I reconcile my mind. If P is true, that means that I keep thinking of this Cubs example. That means the Cubs did the Cubs did their part. They won the game, and yet somehow they get screwed out of the playoffs. That's a farce. That should be false. All the other ones are true. Okay, all the other ones are true. That's how I remember it. All right. So yeah, it is going to ultimately come down, ladies and gentlemen, to kind of like remembering some of these here. Uh, so this would be the truth table for a conditional statement, if P then Q. Notice the only time it's false is, again, is if P is true, and yet uh, Q is false. That's the only time a conditional is false. Other time, otherwise, it's always true. Always true. Okay? So that's the way a conditional will always work, as far as its truth values are concerned. Now the biconditional, if and only if. If and only if is a bidirectional arrow, correct? Um, remember last week we did uh, briefly look at some of the symbolism that we'll be using. A biconditional statement is really two statements, ladies and gentlemen. It really could be worded this way. If P then Q and if Q then P. Let me read that again. Sounds like it's the same, the same thing, but you got to be listening carefully here. If P, then Q, and if Q, then P. So notice the order of the simple statements are flipping around here. Do you agree? On either side of the and, the conjunctive uh, a symbol. All right. That's because this is a bidirectional arrow. This is like a two-way street. Think of it that way. So if you go down street P to go to street Q, well, guess what? You can go backwards if you want to. You can go from street Q back to street P. Think of it that way, maybe. Okay? So if P, then Q, and if Q, then P. Two-way street. Now, got a question for you. When will a biconditional uh, be true? Well, let me ask you this question here. Um, let me ask you, or maybe I uh, should pose it this way here. If both P and Q are true, would the biconditional be true? If yes. P and, yeah, they, yes, that would be correct. Because if P, then Q would be true. And if Q, then P would be true. All right. Okay. Uh, here's another case now. If P is true and Q is false, would the biconditional be true or false? If P is true and Q is false. If the Cubs won tomorrow and yet get screwed out of the playoffs. False. Because if P is Q, true and Q is false, then if P, then Q is false. Do you agree? Need I even, yes. bother, need I even bother with the other one? If Q, then P, then. The answer is no, because and requires that what? Both statements be true. Do you agree? For the whole thing to be true. Wasn't that true for conjunction? All right. So if P is true and Q is false, this whole thing shot out of the water. It's false. Now listen to this one. What if Q is true and P is false? Is this conjunctive statement true or false? If Q is true, but P is false. Oh, if that's true, then if Q, then P would be what? False. Do you agree? Which means the whole conjunctive statement would be, again, what? False. Now, listen carefully here. If both P and Q are false, would if P, then Q be true or false? If both P and Q are false. Would if then if P then Q be true or false? True. That's true. And would if Q then P be true or false? If both P or P and Q were false. If Q then P would also be what? True. True. So would the whole conjunctive statement be true? The answer is 
Yes, because true and true is true. Okay. All right. So that's just kind of like going through here again. Uh, just kind of like reemphasizing re these different cases here that I kind of already went through here. All right. So here is the truth table for a biconditional. This is always true. Notice when is the only time that a biconditional is true? How could you summarize both this? Both statements are true. Both statements are true or both statements are what? False. False. So an easy way to remember when a biconditional is true is that both component statements have to have that have to have the same truth value. If both P and Q are true, biconditional is true. If both P and Q are false, biconditional is true. Otherwise, it's what? False. And again, it's easy to see when you re when you uh, recast the biconditional in the form of a conjunctive compound statement. It's easy to understand why it's true when P and Q are true and true also when P and Q are false and false otherwise. It's easy to see when you, when you look at it from the standpoint that it, re it really is equivalent to a compound conjunctive statement, this biconditional. It really helps you open your eyes up as you go through these cases here. All right, um, this is slide number 17. Okay, ladies, and we're going to have some fun now. Um, I want to work some problems out here, okay? Okay, here we go. I am going to construct a truth table for this compound statement. And this is the compound statement, P or not Q. Is that now how, is that how we read this, P or not Q? P or not Q. We're gonna build the truth table for this compound statement. So what's my first column for two statements? I got two statements, P and Q. What's my first column always called? P. P. Second column is always? Q. Q. And we start our truth table off like this. How does the P column always go? True, true, false, false. You agree? Mm -hmm. And how does the Q column always go? We always start with true and alternate, correct? True, false. True, false. There we go. That accounts for uh, uh, basically uh, uh, enables us to have all of our four combinations of truth values for P and Q. Now, I have a question. What would we deal with first here? Would I deal with the negation of Q or the disjunction, the or of these two statements? What would I do for next year? What do you think? The disjunction. Well, we're not really ready for the disjunction yet until we do the what? we got to do the negation here first. So you know what? That's going to be my next column. The negation of Q. The negation of Q is just the negation of the previous column's truth values. What's the negation of true? To say not true means to say false. What's the negation of false? To say not false is to say true. What's the negation of true? False. The negation of false? True. Does that column make sense here? Pretty simple, huh? Now, ladies and gentlemen, ready for the disjunction. So this column now is going to now deal with the disjunction. So this last column to fill out its truth values is going to rely on what columns? The P column and also the what? The not Q column. We don't care about this column here. So true or false? What's true or false? How does the disjunction work? You remember its truth table? True or false? Is going to be true or false? True or false? True. True. True or true? Going to be true or false? True or true? True. True. False or false? False. True. Or false? Uh, careful. This is an or. That's basically the only time an or is false. Do you agree? If both component statements are false. So if P is false and not Q is false, then. Uh, P or not Q is also going to be what? 
False. False. What do you think this one is? False or true? False, false. or true? No. True. So again, the way an or works is that if at least one and or both of these component statements are true, the whole or is true. The only time an or is false is if both these component statements are false. The only time. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're done. This is the truth table for P or not Q. That's the truth table for P or not Q. The only time it's false is when both of them are false. That's right. That's correct. The only time an or is false is if both component statements are false. Otherwise, it's always true. Now, you know what we're doing here? These truth tables, these truth tables, ladies and really carry right over into the field of computer science when designing computer circuitry. For instance, if P is some like electrical component on a circuit board and Q is another electrical component, suppose that these components are basically tied into each other, all right? Maybe through some conductive line on the circuit board. Suppose true is a high voltage state for a component and false is a low voltage state. If component P is in a high voltage state and component Q is also in a high voltage state, then ladies and gentlemen, this complicated circuit that I've built, which is P or not Q, would also be in a high voltage state. If component P is in a high voltage state and component Q is in a low voltage state, then this complicated circuit would be in a high voltage state. If component P is in a low voltage state, component Q is in a high voltage state, then this component here would be in a low voltage state. If both, well, if component P is in a, a low voltage state and component Q is in a low voltage state, then our complicated circuit by intertwining P and Q together through these different gates here, or gates, not gates, that's a negation gate, would be in a high voltage state. So this really, okay, has real strong uh, parallel consequences in the field of computer science, okay? These truth tables. All right. Does that one make sense then? A truth table for that compound study statement P or not Q? Yes, it makes sense. It just oh. takes some to get used to. Yes, yes, it does. It's all brand new stuff. And you know, trying to remember the truth tables for all these different things, like you know, the conjunction, the disjunction, the negation, the conditional, the biconditional, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's going to take a little bit of practice. But you know how you're going to get your practice is by doing a lot of problems. Not, you know, uh, you're welcome to also do some textbook problems, some odd problems in your textbook. You can check your answers in the back of your book. Of course, I have Alex and I enable you to get a lot of practice through Alex. But again, if you want to do extra practice, do some problems on your textbook, too. They're just sitting there waiting for you. OK. And that's how you're going to strengthen all this in your mind. It's by, you know, just spending time with it. When you spend time with math, usually good things start to happen. Okay? All right. Yeah, I mean, if you run away from it, keep running away from it, then bad things are going to start to happen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do the same thing here. Let's uh, build a truth table for this one. And here it is. This one's a little bit more complicated. Whoops. There should be an arrow here. Arrow. Sorry. Arrow. All right. Does anybody want to take a stab at this and convert this into words? Those symbols? How would we convert that into words? The P if then not Q. What's that? Go ahead again. Is it P if then not Q? If P then not Q. You have that part correct. You have the part inside the parentheses correct. Nice job. Oh, if P then not, not Q. Q. So yep. not. Oh, shoot. Go ahead. Not if then. Yeah, not if P. Not if P. If, not if P then not Q. That's right. There you go. If. Okay. Uh, uh, not P. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You start off this way. Not, not if P, then not what? Q. Do you agree? Q. Let me say it one more time. Not 
if P, then not Q. That's how you read that, okay? All right, let's try to build a truth table for this here. Of course, my first column will be what? P. 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 Second column will be? Q. And how do we always label our truth values for P and Q to basically have our four possible combinations occur? True, true, false, false. True, true, false, false. And Q would be? True, false, true, false. True, false, true, false. It'll always be that way for the P and Q column for two statement, compound uh, statements, okay? When you're building the truth table. This will never change these two columns. All right, I got a question for you, ladies and gentlemen. Order of operations, kind of like back in basic math, had us always inside parentheses first, correct? Correct. That's the same way it works here, too, essentially. So I go inside the parentheses. What do I deal with first? Would I deal with the if then first or just the negation of Q first? What do you think? Negation of Q. Yeah, we really should deal with the negation of Q first. That'll be in our next column here. And the negation of Q is very easy. All you got to do is just negate the Q column. So what's the negation of true? True. No, the negation of true. Oh, false. To say not true is the not same. true. What's the negation of false? To say not false is to say true. true. Not false. Not true is what? False. Not false is what? True. That makes sense how we did negation of Q column. It's just a negation of the Q column, negation of these truth values. That's it. We're still inside the parentheses, so I think we have to do the what next. If. Now, you know, it's time for the if then. Do you agree? Okay. Now, when I do my if then, what columns am I going to be concerned with when I do my if then? How many can be concerned with what? The first statement, which is my. P which is P. And the. the the yeah. other Q, not, not the normal not, one. Not, not Q, not Q column, correct? Which would be my consequence. There's my antecedent, there's my consequence. These are the two columns of concern when I'm trying to deal with the if then here. All right. So we don't worry about the middle, middle, middle column here for the if then. Do you remember? And this, it's ultimately going to come down to can we remember this? If true, then false, ladies and gentlemen. If true, then false. Is that true or false? Wait a minute. Um, false. My, next column, my next column would be the if then. Yeah, there we go. This is my next. Yeah, I, again, I think of that Cub example. The Cubs won, but they got screwed out of the playoffs. That's a farce. False. If true, then true. Would this be true? Would the if then be true? If true, then true. Yes, it's true. It would be true. If false, then false, the Cubs do not win. And so, therefore, yeah, they don't deserve to go to the playoffs. So, this is just as true. This is a true statement. Okay. If false, then true. Well, the Cubs did not true. win. But they still go to the playoffs. Hey, that's great. That's true. Okay. It's a true thing. There you go. Okay. Done with that column. Now we go outside the parentheses and we're ready for the what? The what? The negation. negation. The negation. That's right. That's going to be our next column here. Okay. So now we're going to negate the previous column. We negate the previous column. So what's the negation of false? True. What's the good negation of true? False. Negation of false. True. False. Negation of true. False. And we're done. So this was the order of operations here. We did what? We did the negation first. Then we did the what? The if, then, second. And then we did this what? Negation third outside the parentheses. That was the order in which we proceeded, correct? I see that there. That's the order in which we established our columns. First, the negation. Then the if, then. And then the negation outside the parentheses. And that's your truth table for that compound statement. Is this making any sense how we're building these truth tables like, for two statement compound statements here? <laughs> okay. Now, do you want me to show you one that has uh, a three three statements instead of just two? Up to this point, we just dealt with P and Q, correct? Yeah. Could you have three simple statements in a compound statement? The answer is yes. You could have P, Q, and R. Mm -hmm. Some other statement R, yeah. Maybe I better show you one a little bit more complicated. Okay. But these two uh, statement ones are making sense so far, correct? All right. A little bit of sense. Hopefully just a little bit. Nothing else. 
All right, what if we have three statements? You know, like P, Q, and R. All right, well, essentially, it works the same way. Uh, it's just that now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to deal with, what, three statements. So we have a little bit more possibilities here. Because P could take on one of two states, either true or false. Q could take on one of two states, either true or false. R could take on one of two states, true or false. The fundamental principle, principle of counting in combinatorics says, therefore, there would be how many possible arrangements here of truth values with P, Q, and R? Mm -hmm. well, two times two times two, two times two times two, which is two to the third power, which would be eight possible combinations now. Not just four, but eight possible combinations. And so this is how your PQR columns are always going to go when building a truth table for three simple statements. It's always going to go this way. It'll never change from what I'm about to show you. P column is always going to be true, 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 and then false, 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 false. Always. That's how the P column will always run. The Q column is going to go true, true, and then false, false, and then true, true, and then false, false. That's how the Q column will always run. So it alternates between two trues and true, false, two falses. The R column will literally alternate between true and false. True, false, true, false, true, false, true. False. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. By doing that, you get your eight possible combinations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So the P, Q, and R columns for a three-statement uh, compound uh, situation will always be labeled this way. P column, Q column, R column. It'll never change with this, with from problem to problem to problem. That'll always be the same. All right, shall we build a truth table then? How about a truth table for this statement here? Does anybody want to translate this into words for us? How to translate this these symbols into words? What's that saying? How do we translate? It's a P or a Q. If Q, then R. That's right. P or if Q, then R. Say it again. P or, P or if, Q, if Q, then, then R. R. Exactly. That's how you interpret it, correct? That's how you, you know, translate it into words. If P, if P or if Q, then R. I have a question for you. What are we going to deal with first? Do we deal with the disjunction or the if then? The if then. We're inside the parentheses. We do the if then first. This requires the number one precedence for this problem. So my next column is going to be the if Q then R column. That's my next column in my truth table. All right. So I'm concerned with what columns? The Q and the what? The R. So here we go. If true, then true. Is the condition conditional true or false? If true, then true. It's true. If true, then yeah. false. The Cubs won, but got screwed out of the playoffs. That's a farce. Do you agree? False. If false, then true. Hey, they still go to the playoffs. True. If false, then false. They lost. They don't deserve to go to the playoffs. That's still true in my mind. If true, then true. True. If true, then false. That's a farce. They won, but got screwed out of the playoffs. If false, then true. Hey, we're still going to the playoffs. True. If false, then false. They lost. They don't deserve to go to the playoffs. You're right. This is still true. There you go. Do we understand how we filled out that column? The if-then portion of this compound statement. All right, what's the only thing remaining now? One thing left. What is it? The P or. The or. Yep, the, the disjunction now is next, the or. So that will be my last column here, dealing with the or. 
So what two columns must I or together? What's my first statement in this or? The P column, correct? It's got to be this column. And I or it with what other column? The if Q then R column, correct? So we don't deal with the, the middle two columns. We don't, we don't care about these middle two columns. So therefore, true or true? True or true? And true. The or is true. True or false? True or false? The or is still true. 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 At least one of your component states is true. The or is always true, unlike and. Now, true or true? True. True or true? True. False or true? False or true? Still what? True. 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 False or false? That's false. I mean, yes, this is the only right. time an or is false when both statements are false. False or false is false. False or true. Back to true. False or true. True. And there you go. That'd be the truth table uh, for this compound statement P or if Q then R. There you go. So if P and Q take on these truth values, the complicated uh, statement will take on this truth values right here. All right. Did that make an ounce of sense for a three statement truth table, albeit a little bit longer? It still essentially works the same way. It's just that you got more to take care, you know, kind of more to keep track of. All right. Okay. Now, what time is it? All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the uh, the hierarchy of connectives in logic. What do we do first? What do we do second, third, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Well, we've already got a little snippet here a little bit. Uh, we've always, we always go inside what first? We've always gone inside what? Inside what, parentheses first? Yes, parentheses. So we've been doing that. So we kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit there. So we're going to call this the hierarchy, the hierarchy of logical connectives. All right, now, number one, number one precedence are, are uh, uh, statements in, or compound statements or simple statements inside what? Parentheses, you always do parentheses first, okay? Number two on the level of precedence. Then you always do your negations. Those are next. And we have seen that before. You always do your negations next. It's this little symbol here. That means not. That's a negation of a statement. Then you look for conditionals. If you have any conditionals, you do those next. So the arrow, the one directional arrow, those are next in line, uh, next in precedence. Then, if our statement has any biconditionals, we do those next. So we look for the double direction arrow, biconditional. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. This is kind of like the order of operations uh, for, connect, uh, for logical connectives. Always work inside parentheses first. Then you do any negations next. Then deal with any biconditionals, the if-then. 
and then you deal with any buy. I'm sorry, you deal with any conditionals if then. Then last, you deal with the buy conditionals if and only if. If and only if. Okay. You know, if you stay in this math business long enough, you're going to start seeing a lot of theorems in math. And some theorems are if-then theorems, one-way street theorems. But some theorems are two-directional theorems. They go in both directions, if and only if theorems. Okay. Proving if-then theorems, all you have to do is prove it in one direction. If the antecedent, then the consequence. But later on, proving if and only if theorems are more involved because you got to prove the theorem in this direction and then you got to turn around and prove it in this direction. These type of proofs or these type of theorems require a little bit more work. Okay. So you start to see or hear this if then or if and only if uh, <coughs> um, jargon, if you will, uh, when you start getting into theorems in mathematics and or proving theorems. Okay, now here's what we're going to do. Based on that hierarchy of logical connectives here, I'm going to write down a statement, and I want you to indicate to me what we would do first, second, third, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, so the instructions might say state the order. State the order. All right, statement number one is like this. All right, what would I do first here? Do I have any parentheses? Any parentheses? No. no. Do I have any negations? You have two of them. Yes. yes. We must do the negations first. All right, so here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put parentheses around the thing that we need to do first to emphasize our understanding of what we need to do first according to the hierarchy of logical connectors. You told me we do the negations first. So therefore, I'm going to rewrite this statement here. I'm going to rewrite it so that I put parentheses around the negations. That is indicating symbolically that yes, we would do the negations first. Then we would deal with the what last? The the or. Okay. We deal with the or. All right. You know, you're probably wondering where do the ors come in? You know, well, if there was a fifth precedence, my thinking would be, no, they're not stating it in our textbook right now, but my my thinking would be we would probably tackle the what? The the ors and the, and then the what the ands probably last. Okay, that'd be my thinking here after all of this. Here. Okay. All right, we're done with that one. Uh, statement number two. You tell me what I would do first, second, third, etc. Um, if P, then not Q and R. What would I do first? Do I do the if then, the negation, or the and? The negation. Yeah, the negation, again, we don't have any parentheses, so we're not, we're, negations are next in line, so we got to do the negation. All right, so I'm going to put a parenthesis around the negation first because that's the first thing we need to do. What would we do next, the if then or the and? Probably the what, the condition? The if then. Yeah, the condition mm -hmm. of the, the uh, disjunctions and conjunctions here. So we'll do the if then next. And to represent that, I'm going to put a parenthesis around this. That makes sense? Then when we're taught back in basic math, we always do the innermost nested parentheses first, correct? So we would do negations first. And then the what? If then. And last but not least, we would do the what? The, the conjunction. The and are. And there you go. That's how we would place parentheses in that expression to emphasize the precedence according to the hierarchy that's above there. Is this making sense here, what I'm doing? Let's try another one here. All right, where would the action begin here? Do I have any parentheses? Negation. Yeah, we don't have any parentheses, but I do have a negation. We would do the negation of P first. So therefore, I will put a parenthesis around the negation of P first. All right, good. We do that. Then what would we do next? Would we do the biconditional or the ors? The biconditional. Yeah, uh, biconditional is above the ands of the ors. So to emphasize that, I'll put parentheses around that guy. And then I'll put parentheses around what? This right here. And the if and only if will be... Uh, 
Wait a minute here. Hold, hold on. Wait. Wouldn't, wouldn't the Q, wouldn't the Q, the in the back edition, uh, would be in the parentheses? This is wrong. Okay, let's start over. Here. We would do the negation of P first, correct? Okay. Right. All right. We do the negation of P first. You are correct. Then we do the what? The biconditional, don't we? Yes. So we would have to do the Q if and only if what? Q, as oddly as that seems. <laughs> that have, sounds... That's kind of weird, isn't confusing. it? Confusing. But only if Q, yeah. It's like, kind of like a weird situation. And then we would do the what last. We would do the, you know, kind of like the what? The ors, correct? Kind of like the... The... Um, the ores here. Yeah, do that last. That's kind of a weird one there. But yeah, that would be kind of like the, you know, the order in a way. Um, that seems confusing. Yeah, it is. That is kind of confusing. In a way. All right. Well, I'll forget that one. But you get the general idea in a way? Anyway, in general, how we're doing some of these here? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's see where we are with the clock. Two. All right. Well, maybe we could go and uh, to our textbook and uh, maybe have a little bit of fun, huh? All right. Uh, I like to think of this as being like playtime now. Let's go to our textbook. If I can get into my textbook. There we go. Now, now uh, somebody indicated that some assignments are not open. Which ones are not open? Let's take a look here. 2.1 was due January 27th at midnight. 2.2, January 27th at midnight. 2.3, due January 27th at midnight. 2.4, January 27th at midnight. The chapter two quiz was due January 28th at midnight. Oh, another thing, ladies and gentlemen, is from now on, as far as the quizzes and exams or Alex are concerned, I'm going to have like where I where it just says basically it just says quiz chapter two. That's the quiz that most of us take. But then it also has quiz chapter two only for students with accommodations. If they submitted a letter from the disability services to me, this is the quiz that you will take. All right. And that will also be the case for future exams, too. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll clearly indicate the exam you should take uh, with accommodations versus just a regular exam that we should all, uh, the rest, most of us should, should take. Oh, I need to. So look at, it. listen, if you gave me an accommodation letter, all right, if you already took the, the quiz chapter two here, unless you don't want me to, I can delete that quiz score and then you can do the accommodated quiz chapter two. You still get, you know, two takes and all that other stuff, Okay. Um, but just let me know if you don't want me to delete your quiz chapter two takes, if you're satisfied with those this time around for the first time, I'll take those, but otherwise I'm going to delete them. And I want you to take this chapter two quiz. Does that make sense there? How we're going to do quizzes and exams for the general populace versus accommodations. In general, for general can yes. you say that again? What's that? You said for general, can you say that again? Well, most of us, okay, did not submit a letter of accommodation to me, in which case we'll just do quiz chapter two. But some right. of you did submit a letter of accommodation to me, in which case I designed a quiz to accommodate you a little bit more. Okay, so you do this one that says quiz chapter two only for students with accommodations. Does that make sense? That's the one you do. If, yeah. you, sent me, if you sent me a letter, okay? So just I sent you a letter, but I didn't see that one. All right, but... I know, and you're right, because I just put it up there yesterday. But what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, is if you did take the regular Chapter 2 quiz and you're not happy with those grades, if you want to do this one now, because I think I gave it, because that's due, look at February 2nd. See that by midnight, the accommodation quiz. So if you want to do this one, I'll take the higher scores, okay? So just keep, okay. Keep that in mind. All right. If you're satisfied with Quiz Chapter 2, you don't have to do this one here. All right, I'll just take your quiz chapter two, but you know, you're welcome to do the accommodated quiz if you sent me a letter. Does that make sense? Yes, I do have another question as far yeah. as in homework. So before when, I think the first day of class, you said that it's unlimited takes mm -hmm. on the 
homework. Yeah. But like at, for the overall grade, like if we got a low score, any of our homeworks would another score replace that score, or was that only just on quizzes? Oh, well, if I explained that right. Yeah, we, it goes back to the syllabus. I know that I'm going to replace two lowest what uh, quiz scores, I believe, correct? That's according to the syllabus, with the highest mm -hmm. quiz, quiz scores. And I'm going to replace one lowest exam score with your highest exam score. Mm -hmm. As far as the homework is, is concerned, no, I don't think I'd replace it. Here's why, because you do have unlimited takes on that. And they're quick, okay. they're quick retakes, too. So that means, like, if you miss, like, three problems, you don't have to redo the whole darn thing. All you got to do is just do the three problems you got wrong. And because I give you unlimited ladies, I mean, it seems to me like, gosh, if you do this thing five or six times, it seems like you'd probably have it down to 100 by then. Do you agree? Agree, yeah. That's my thinking. That's why I'm not going to replace any homework. But I will replace two quizzes and one exam. All right. I have a oh, um... Now, look, at I did not open up Section 3.1 yet. I will have to open that up, all right? And also, we're doing 3.2 today. Will you open 3.1 and 3.2 today, yeah. or will yeah. you wait? I'll get those open today, all right? I have a question about the um, classwork. Uh -huh. So I had some technical difficulties Thursday, and I didn't get... Right. I don't know if there was any more extra done, and I went to watch the video so yes. I can check and see if there was any before midnight, and the video was not up. Uh, so if you're not on online actually getting the classwork, does that mean we just don't get the chance to do it if we miss any of it? Yeah, normally classwork is, you know, if you're in class, you do it. Okay. Great. But if you're not in class, you just miss it. I will drop two lowest ones. Uh, let's see these lecture videos here. Two points. I was, I was on it. Just I think I might. Yeah, I, I don't have a lecture video for three one up yet. I got to get that up there. Okay. You know, but uh, since I did not have the video up, I'll allow you with the, when I get yes. the video posted, you can, there's classworks that are stated in that video. You can just do those and get those into me. Okay. Okay. When would the classwork be graded? Yeah. Um, what I want to do with classwork is I grade it kind of like on a weekly basis. So I'm kind of like holding off till I get all the weekly classworks and I'll start putting grades in the campus. All right. Yeah. I haven't actually started a grade book in campus yet. Okay. I haven't done that yet. I'm waiting for grades to come in and I'm start transferring things into Canvas. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, how did I get on all this? Oh, we we're gonna go have some fun, right? Okay, the textbook. So let's uh, let's start going yes. into our textbook. See if we can do a couple of these problems here. Um, I'm gonna maybe. What? Okay. Hold on a second. Okay, yeah, all right. Let's, let's go in and let's do a couple problems so we get paid for today. Uh, 3.2, truth tables. And again, you're always welcome to look over, you know, the sections here. Uh, oh, you see these, ladies and gentlemen? These are the gates that are used on computer circuit boards. AND gates, an AND gate basically is an AND, an intersection. And so in order for the output to be true, both inputs have to be true. Do you agree? Or in other words, in order to have this component output a high voltage state, both input voltage states have to be high. If one of them, at least one of them is in the low voltage state, then the output of an AND gate will be a low voltage state. And you got an OR gate, which is a union. In order for a union or an OR gate to be false or to be in a low voltage state, both voltage states have to be in a low voltage. Both voltage states have to be low. If at least one of the voltage state input states are high, then the Output of the OR gate will be a high voltage state. These are not gates here. These are your negations. So in other words, if you put a zero into a not gate, out comes a one. Or if you put a one into a not gate, out comes a zero. In other words, if you put a low voltage state into a not gate, ladies and gentlemen, it inverts it into a high voltage state. If you put a high voltage state into a not gate, it, it inverts it to a low voltage state. Now, this might seem a little complicated, but, but stop and think. It gets even more complicated. Ladies and gentlemen, you would believe on a little chip, a chip so small you could put on one of your fingers. On that chip, they have burned billions and billions of AND gates and NOR gates and NOT gates all tied into very complex circuitry. And they all work in unison or work as an orchestration to do what we allow, what we enjoy computers to do. So it's really an amazing thing. Computers really are an amazing invention, to say the least. They really are. Billions of these things. Not what we're, we're looking at a finite number here. Do you agree? 
No, there's envision millions of these things all hooked together, like an AND gate hooked to an OR gate, hooked to another combination of AND gates and ONOR gates and NOT gates. You got all these different circuits that are constructed, these complicated circuits, by using these simple little gates here. Right? It's really amazing that computers are able to do what they do when you, uh, if you were to see the complexity of the circuitry or like a, a, a computer processing unit, a CPU, that's so small that it sits on a little wafer that could fit, fit on the, the tip of a pen. Mind boggling. They use lasers to burn those gates into little silicon wafers. Okay, really amazing. All right. So computers are amazing to say the least. All right. Now, how do we get on a subject? Okay. Well, we're just at the doorstep of basic logic here. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's what I want you to do. I want you to build a truth table for problem number seven. Now, how many statements does this one have? Two or three? Two. Two statements. So, you're going to have a P column and a what? Q column to start, correct? And then what are you going to do next? Hierarchy of operations. What would we do next? After P the, in the parentheses. P or. You do the or next, right? That'll be your next column, P or Q. Then your last column is going to be the negation of that column, correct? Correct. Go ahead. Build a truth table for this compound statement. I'll give you some time. We'll call this classwork number one. Where did I write those down? We'll build a truth table for problem number seven, the classwork number one. Uh, is it okay if I even come back real quick because it won't show up on my screen? Recording.
All right. So um, this will be the truth table for not P or Q. Um, notice P column is true, true, false, false. Q column is true, false, true, false. P or Q is what you do first inside parentheses. So true or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or false is false. Then you just negate the previous column. Negation of true is false. Negation of true is false. Negation of true is false. Negation of false is true. You know, for the answer in your book, ladies and gentlemen, how are they going to state the truth table for this statement here? Well, they don't actually build a whole truth table. All they do is just cite the last column. These are the truth values. Okay. I got a, I got a question. Uh, yes. If that if the negation is supposed to go second in order, then why did we do it last? Well, because we have parentheses. Because or is inside what parentheses? Remember, parentheses takes precedence. Do you agree? Oh, right, right, right. Parentheses right. goes above everything. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always go inside parentheses first. Parentheses takes you know uh, takes precedence over everything. I don't care what it is. And, you know, that's just the way it worked for that one there. Did anybody get this here? False, 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 true? Or from okay. The, okay. All right. All right. Um, you know, these really are not that bad once you get used to them. They're actually kind of fun. Uh, I hope you all get to a point where you can start to have a little fun on these. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you want to try number 13? Number 13. Let's see if you can build a truth table for this guy. What are you going to do first? Order of operations. Parentheses. Do the and first because it's inside parentheses. Then you do the what? Negation. Negation. And then you do the what? The if then. Agree? Okay. Go to it. See if you can do this. Put together that truth table for number 13. This is a good one. Is this classwork too? Yes, we can call this classwork number two. All right. Classwork two.
không cái đẹp I'm confused. Ah, so what are you confused on? Pretty much the whole thing. All right, I'm going to show it to you in a second. Here. We ready to look at this or not? Yes. Yeah. Oh, all right, let's see if we can begin to peek at this thing. This is the one he's going to just kind of chip away at. And that's the way they are. I mean, when they get really complicated, you just do one little thing at a time. And you'll get there eventually. Let's take a look here. All right, now, order of operations here. I'm inside the parentheses. Well, first of all, hold on. I got my P column and my Q column, correct? True, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. All right. Now, we do what's inside parentheses first. You got to do the, the, uh, the and. Right, the con the conjunction first. This is P and Q, so that's my next that's my uh, next column right after Q. P and Q order of operations. True and true, is it true or false? True and true. 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 True, true and false. 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 False and true. False. And false and false, false. Done with the parentheses, correct? Yeah. Now, what do I do next? Negations or if then? Negation. Negation. That's my next column. Negation. The negation of the previous column. So, what's the negation of true? False. What's the negation of false? True. Negation of false. True. Negation of false. True. That's done. So ladies and gentlemen, I dealt with this, what's inside the parentheses and negation. Now it's time for the what? If then? It's time for the if then. Yes. That's my last column. The if then. The whole darn statement. Now, what columns do, do I concern myself with? What is the first statement of the if then? Oh, it's, it's this column, isn't it? This column. Mm -hmm. That's the first statement. The second statement after the word then is the what? Is the, the P column way back over here. So we have to read it this way. If false, then what? Then true. If false, this statement, this statement, then true. So if false, then true. Is the conditional true or false if I say if false, then true? Cubs lost, but Cubs still go to the playoffs. Yippee. True, correct? If true, then true. The conditional is? True. True. If true, then false. Cubs win, but get screwed. If true, false. then false, that's a farce. False. If true, then false. No good. False. There you go. Did anybody get that constructed correctly? Yes. All right. You know, it's not that bad when you when you chip away at it. So you got to know the hierarchy, the order of operations. That's critical. That is extremely important. And that's why you want to memorize parentheses first, then what? Negations, then conditionals, if thens, then biconditionals, if and only ifs. And then your ors and your ands. Okay. The hierarchy of operations. Very important. All right. So that would be it. Now, you know, in the back of your book, 
when you check your answer, your author is only going to have this for your answer. Just the last column. That's it. True, true, false, false. You're not going to see the rest of this. That's a shame. You know, that's all you're going to see. But I'm showing you nonetheless how to build them, build these tables. Let's try another one, okay? You know, the more of these you try, the better you're going to get. It's going to start to make more sense and start to feel more natural and all that stuff. But it just it requires a lot of practice, a lot of practice. You can see there's loads of practice problems in here. Uh, the odd problems, you can check your answers in the back of your book. All right, so that was number 13. See how they cite the answer? True, true, false, false. That's it. They don't show you the whole table. Okay, let's try this next one here. Um, try to do one of each type here. Uh, maybe we could try number 17. How about the biconditional here? How do we read this here? It would be read as if P and Q. No, 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 no. It would be read this way. P and Q, if and only if, Q or not P. Let me read that again. P, P and Q, if and only if, Q or not P. What would we do first here? Order of operations. The two, the two parentheses? Parentheses, yeah. You'd have to do the and first with the P and Q. That could be your next column after Q. Um, but you're also, if you do the or, wait, but the second set of parentheses, what would you have to do first though? Not the or, but the negation. Now you'd have to have a column for the negation of P. Then you could do the or of P or not Q. And then the and you do the by conditional, the if and only if, where this is your first statement and this is your second statement. See if you can put that all together, ladies and gentlemen, in the truth table, number 17, just try to do something with it. Okay. Obviously, you only have two statements, P and Q. So you start off with your P column and your Q column, and then you go from there. All right, go ahead. Try it out. Try to do some of this. All this classwork three. It really gets me there. Whole thing really confuses me. All right, we'll take a look at it in a couple of minutes here. Just a couple of more minutes. Well, I'll, I'll put it together. We'll look at it. It even gets me on how to set up the truth table for it. Well, you start with columns P and Q. Start I got with, those. Then I'm going to go with P and Q as my next column after that P and Q. I'm going to do it to say parentheses here next. That's what I'm going to address next.
Ah, uh, let's take a look here. First column is P column. True, true, false, false. Q column. True, false, true, false. I did what's inside parentheses yeah, first. I did, I did the P and Q first, uh, next, or actually first. That's my next column after Q. So true and true, true. True and false, false. False and true, false. False and false, false. Then I went over to the second set of parentheses said I got to do the negation of P before I do the or. So the next column would be a negation of P. The negation of true, false. The negation of true, false. The negation of false, true. The negation of false, true. Then I do the or between Q and not P. So my two columns would be Q and not P. So what's true or false? True or false? True. True. False or false? False. False, false is false. That's the only time an or is false, by the way. True or true. True or true is true. False or true is true. Then I do the biconditional, the if and only if. So here we go. So what columns am I going to use? I'm going to use this column. And I'm going to use this column. So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen. True if and only if true is true. False, if and only if false, is true. False, if and only if true, is false. False, if and only if true, is false. Done. Anybody get that? Um, yes. I need my negate first because I thought the negations came after the parentheses. Okay, now, you know, let me see, let me back up here. You know, it would not be a crime, ladies and gentlemen, if instead of having this column first, you have the negation of P column first. That'd be okay. In other words, you could have these two columns switch. It would not be a crime if you had that, okay? Okay. But the bottom line is, did we all end up with this in the end? See, that really is the key is right here. This has to be it. This has to be your truth values. The whole statement. 
That's the important thing. If you did not get that last column correct, then there's obviously a mistake in some of your what your uh, your previous columns, correct? There's a mistake in. Right, I got it. I just had those I two got it. switched around. Yeah, like I said, with practice, um, this is really going to start to seem more natural, and it's just going to take a little bit of practice. You know, it's brand new. I mean, you probably never did this before, so uh, uh, hey, uh, it's going to require practice. But with practice, I guarantee you, it's going to start to come into focus. And uh, who knows? Hopefully, we can get to a point where we actually have a little bit of fun with this too. That would be a great thing, also. But that, that requires a little bit of practice. Huh. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, up to this point, all of our all of our compound statements have had two simple statements. Do you agree? Maybe we should do one that has what three statements in it. All righty. Uh, do you want me to do another one with three statements before I turn you loose on one or what? Or you just want to dive in and try one for classwork? What do you think? I'm good to go. All right. Well, I got a, I got a beauty lined up here. Uh, number 23, ladies and gentlemen, has how many statements in it? Number 23. Three. Yeah, it's got three. It's got a P, a Q, and an R. Now, do you have that example of the way you lay out your table? P column, Q column, and R column. You got that example of what I worked out? You're going to label the P column and yeah. the Q column, the R column, exactly the same way, and then go from there. Order of operations. What would I do first here? Order of operations. 23. Wow. Well, we got to do the parentheses first. So we have to parentheses, do, yeah. do the or, P or Q, and then we got to be do what? P and R. Yeah, that's first. Then what would we do after that? After the parentheses. The negations. Negations outside the parentheses. And then in the end, you do the if then. All right, go ahead. Number 23, we'll call that classwork. Uh, I don't know. I, I lost track. Was it four? All right. 20, four. Go ahead. Try that monster there. Let me know. That's a beauty. See if you can do something with that one.
Okay, I think I got it. The whole getting doing three of them is confusing me. Yeah, three does uh, enable force you to do a little bit more book work. Um, another thing that would be very helpful here, like when I lost my ruler, I don't know where it's at, but you should use line paper where you have, you know what I'm saying, the lines here so that you can see all the way across, you know, the statements. Um, I lost my ruler, but you're, you know, you really should use line paper and turn your paper so that you can, you know, use the lines here, okay? Because it can start to get a little out of hand with these three statements. All right. You got your P column. True, 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 true. False, 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 false. Always that way with three statements. Q column. True, true. False, false. True, true. False, false. Always that way. R column. Alternate. True, false. True, false. True, false. True, false. Always that way. All right. I did what's inside Prince. Oh, oh, can I ask a question really quick? Go ahead. Cause I see you got an extra one. I got seven. You got eight. Uh, we negate. We negate. Oh, I didn't know it was a negation in front of that. Oh, okay. My bad. All right. All right. Yeah, but you know you can rework it. You know. Um, yeah, I just didn't do the um for the second yeah, statement yeah. in the parentheses. I didn't know that it was a negation in front of that. It'd probably be best just to you know start all over. Crap. Yeah, you know, yeah. Trying to put something in here, but uh, you can watch along here. Um, or right, P or Q. So look at uh, true or true is what? True. True or true is true. True or false is still true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or true is true. False or false is false. False or false is false. Now I did the and inside parentheses here. P and R. Uh, so that's going to be true and true is true. True and false is false. True and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is false. False and false is false. False and true is false and false and false is false. Then I said, okay, I'm gonna negate the P or Q. So we're gonna negate the P or Q. Uh, so that's negating this column. Negation of true, false. 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 Negation of false, true. Negation of false, true. That one's done. Finally, I'm going to negate P and R, which is negating this column right here. Negation of true, false. Negation of false, true. Negation of true, false. Negation of false, true. 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 Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I deal with the what? The if then. Do you agree? I put it all together in my last column. Now, this is your first statement of the if-then. This is your second statement. This is the antecedent. This is the consequence. So if false, then false is what? If false, then false is true. If false and true. Wait, if they false. They are true, but one. Yeah, if false, then true is what? True. If false, then false is still what? True. If false, then true. If the Cubs lose but still go to the playoffs, yay, true. That's a beautiful situation. If false, then true, true. If false, then true, true. If true, then true, true. If true, then true is true. Did anybody get all trues for the last column? I did, but one. So that's probably where I'm missing that. Okay. All um, right. hey, good I'm job. Missing. I mean, this you can see this is a lot more involved with three statements. It's going to just take a little bit more practice. But – most of the emphasis on Alex and all these problems, like quizzes for exams, are really going to be like the two statements. Okay, I might throw maybe a three statement on there. I'm not going to have a lot of them. A lot of them, though. Okay. 
The three statements just take so long. It does. It does. Um, you know, ladies, I'm going to check this out. Do you agree? It doesn't matter what inputs a P, Q, and R are as far as their truth values are concerned. The output is always what? True, isn't it? Always true. This is called a tautology. A tautology. We're going to look at those in, the, in a section to come in our future. A tautology is a compound statement that's always true regardless of the truth values of the inputs. Always true. It's called a tautology. It's a tautology. Right. So when it comes to the if-then stuff, like on the last three, yeah. two false are always going to make a truth? Yeah. If false, then false is always what? True. That's, okay. that's what, yeah. If false, then false is always true. When is it if then only only false? If you remember, if the Cubs win, then they get what? They get shystered at the end. Do you agree? Then they don't go to the playoffs. They did their part, but got screwed out of the playoffs. Then this would be what? This would be false, correct? If true, then false is the only time, and if then is false. Otherwise, it's always true. Always true. So, ladies and gentlemen, do you think with practice, you might get better at this with some practice? Yeah. It's just going to take a little bit of practice. It really is. But you'll see. I mean, you will get better at this, all right? And I would recommend that you try to do some problems, again, out of your textbook. And, you know, the beautiful thing about Alex when you're doing your homework is you can always click on a button if you get stumped. Do you agree? And it'll show you an example. It'll work it entirely out for you, correct? Yeah. And then you can go back and do the problem that you're being asked to do, which is extremely similar to the guide, you know, the, the example. Or you can even do a guided solution. All right. And that'll show you exactly how to, you know, do your problem that you're having to deal with. All right, I think this might be good enough here, ladies and gentlemen. Our brains need a rest, okay? So I will let you go. I will hang on the line for a couple minutes if you have any questions and or concerns. Okay, if not, have a great day. Hopefully I'll see you on uh, Thursday. Have a good day. Okay, we'll see you. <clears throat> I was the one that said about how 3.1 was locked. It showed that like yes. everything for chapter 3 was locked until the 9th. I got to get those. everything was due before. Yeah. I know. I got to get them open right now in a couple minutes, okay? Three, one, okay. And two, two, and also I want to get that video attached, okay? Okay. All right. Thank oh, you. Okay, so uh, three, three point one and 2 will be posted today? The Alex. I'm going to open up the 3, 1, and 3, 2 from Alex, okay? Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. I had a question for when we...